Hey, I'm Swinny Chen, and today we have recreations of two iconic but lesser known aircraft from World War II. The first being the Soviet PE-8 bomber that you see here. In real life, the PE-8 bomber was a long-range heavy bomber developed by the Soviet Union in the late 1930s. It was primarily used for strategic bombing during World War II and was capable of carrying up to 5,000 kilograms of bombs. I had a lot of fun making this one. I had to result to some interesting design choices to actually get this to look like the real plane with stock parts. I also added a really cool dorsal gun pod that actually works. Uh, this uses the IJKL keys, the translate keys, to move around and it fires and works like an actual gun pod. Uh, going up against the P-8 bomber, we have a familiar sight, but a little bit different. This is the ME-262A1U4. This is a bomber-destroyer variant uh, of the famous ME-262 that I did in a completely separate video that I sent to Lathe. And uh, this never made it past prototyping, but uh, it's really damn cool. It has a massive 50mm anti-tank gun mounted in the nose. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's going to do some heavy damage to the P-8 if it can actually uh, get to it. Looks like the PE-8's dorsal gunner has already spotted the Messerschmitt approaching and uh, is doing some like pot shots, not really hitting anything. Uh, but you can see the really awesome uh, recoil coil on the uh, gun pod there and that was completely accidental. That's just because the robotic parts that hold it together are a little bit weak. And the uh, gunner's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit nutty there and almost blowing its own tail fin off. So. <laughs> The uh, ME is going to come back in for a, another round. Now it's using a, uh, this is all using stock uh, rocket launcher, uh, firework launcher, I should say, uh, parts. These are overclocked with a CAL unit. To recreate a 50 millimeter cannon, I decided to overclock this one to like a thousand launch velocity. So it is very powerful and will absolutely shred this, as you can see. <laughs> That blew off one of the engines, so now we are uneven on engines, but that gunner is still after the ME-262. Zoomed in, trying for accuracy, he managed to blow something off. You can see a little explosion appear back there, but it just turned out to be one of the ailerons on the wing. Not really going to do much to stop that. I had a bit of a problem whenever it was close, it seemed that the uh, firework things, <laughs> the little balls that it shoots out, the firework charges. I just kind of phased through the ME-262, and that only happened with that, so I'm guessing it's some kind of weird bug with Velocity. We're really pushing the limits of what KSP can do here. It's not intended to be guns or anything, these firework launchers, so eh, I'm okay with it. The ME-262 is coming in for another pass hot on the tail of the now partially disabled PE-8. At this point, I was having a lot of difficulty uh, with the control of the Messerschmitt. The control was really janky at this altitude, so I brought things a little bit farther down. I also adjusted the uh, deploy angle on one of the ailerons to even out the roll I was getting from the uneven engines. And uh, coming for a really close pass with the Messerschmitt and blow the other engine off. So now we have a twin engine instead of a four engine PE-8, <laughs> and it looks like I made it that way. But you can imagine, if this was real life, it would be leaking a lot of fluids and fuels and stuff like that. So we finish it off with the Messerschmitt now, blowing it to bits. That front cannon is no joke. And you can see him doing a little bit of a victory lap there. Here's a little quick replay of the, uh, <laughs> of the whole event. Really, really freaking cool. So now that the uh, Messerschmitt has won this battle, fear not, there are more rounds. <laughs> so now we're going to focus a little bit more on the PE-8's back gun pod here. It's going to try to light up the Messerschmitt. I love the uh, the accidental recoil I was talking about. It turned out pretty good. So basically this is controlled with the translate keys, and then uh, 5 resets the gun pod back to uh, its original position. And uh, that gunner is really really playing fast and loose about hitting the uh, <laughs> the rear, uh, rear fence. I, I forget the names of all control surfaces while I'm making videos, I swear. The elevators, that would be it. Slash uh, horizontal stabilizers. So here we go, the uh, gunner is really missing every single shot still. Had a lot of trouble hitting with this because of the bouncy recoil whenever uh, firing. And here you can see some of what I was talking about with the uh, 
Messerschmitts control these altitudes being really janky. But we got a direct hit on one of the Messerschmitts engines there as it was approaching for undoubtedly another pass trying to blow an engine off of the PE-8. <laughs> really the battle of losing engines at this point. So the uh, Messerschmitt is just not going to be able to maintain speed in these altitudes with one engine. So he's going to have to make an emergency water landing. No doubt losing fuel too. But uh, the gunner is, is, is still... He's still trying to go at it. Uh, through most of this, my gunner, by the way, was named Burger Kerman. If you spot that down on the right hand side. Uh, <laughs> so Burger forced the ME to make an emergency water landing. There he is right there. May I'll pull him up and a little zoom in. <laughs> also, this thing was getting it. Look at that. 140 meters per second in like level flight. Uh, this is a little bit overpowered compared to the PE-8. Uh, the real life one that is. But we're going to land it at the tiny, tiny island runway if we can. I freaked out for a second here and thought that my camera had like my camera's like infinitely zooming away for a bit there. I was afraid I was going to have to land it with the in cockpit view, which is going to be a disaster. Um, because this thing doesn't have the best viewing angle of its like landing gear and like I don't kn I don't know it well enough to land it by the in cockpit view. But uh, you can see we get a beautiful sunset landing here on the island strip. Absolutely nothing goes wrong with this landing, and you, you'll be able to tell here in a second. Nothing goes wrong, no porpoising or nose diving or anything of the sort. I'm a perfect pilot. I have no flaws. So you can get a little bit of a better look at the uh, P-8 there, and we're going to get a better look at the Fab 5000 5-ton bomb. And it's dropping it right on the VAB because it won, and the Messerschmitt didn't this round. <laughs> We can imagine this is the Messerschmitt's uh, home territory, and uh, after uh, taking it out and clearing the airspace, I guess they protect their airspace with a singular fighter. It was able to do that, but no doubt they have more fighters because there's another one on the P-8's tail, and uh, he's trying for some kind of long-range shots there, but the uh, the gunner can't, can't quite get a line of fire there. That's the fault with this P-8. I didn't add the uh, two guns in the first two engines uh, there's two gun pods in there and then there's a tail gun and that would give me a lot more cones of fire um, so you can see the <laughs> Messerschmitt is coming up hot on the tail again but the uh, gunner is trying to blow him away but there's that kind of annoying glitch I was telling you about where the bullets just kind of phase through or it could just be that I'm missing everything <laughs> another cool flyby and approach on the uh, PE-8 there by the Messerschmitt I was really enjoying getting some cool shots. That cannon on the front looks sick. So here we're going to try to get a long range shot. And I think he will. Blows the wing right off and you get a really cool uh, cinematic there of the explosion. Just parts flying everywhere. <laughs> so that is a Messerschmitt ME262 Bomb Destroyer variant. 2 PE-8-1. <laughs> So now he's going to do a little bit of a victory landing. I'm sure. Oh wait, that's actually Burger flying this. How did Burger end up in the? Burgers in the ME262. Burgers on both sides of the war. The hell's Burger doing? So we have our double agent Burger Kerman landing it, and this was genuinely actually an okay landing for me. I only porpoised one time. And uh, then we taxi it back to the runway. Runway, the hangar, space plane hangar. Wish you could actually enter it, that'd be pretty cool. But hey, if you like this video, check out my other videos. I'll put up a playlist here in a minute of other recreations. And check out my A-10, my other cargo's Burt sticker if you like aerospace content. So uh, here's a little playlist, check that out. And subscribe to the channel if you really, really like the video. Like it, stuff like that. 